Hey everyone and welcome to the More Life Podcast. I'm your host Kevin and as you guys can see, we got a very, very special guest with us. Well, she's not really a guest. She's going to be my co-host. So I'm pretty sure you guys out there know her. This is my beautiful wife beside me. Go ahead and introduce yourself, babe. Hi everybody. My name is Cassandra and I am so happy to be here. I am going to be sitting alongside right here, yeah, Kevin, okay. the co-hosting. Mm-hmm. Today, we are going to be doing a very, very elite interview. Ooh, elite. I like, yes. I, you know what? I like the way how that sounded. I like the way how that sounded. So. And Kevin's going to be sharing his story. Ooh. So I am excited mm-hmm. to ask a few questions. Ooh, okay. Also, I'm excited to ask questions that you guys out there that sent Kevin some mm-hmm. questions that you guys had on his Instagram. Yep. So we're going to be answering. Well, Kevin is going to be answering mm-hmm. those questions. So mm-hmm. stay tuned throughout the uh, interview to hear his answers. Yes. And if you would like to, all our social medias will be down there in the description box below. Make sure you guys go give us a follow because I'll be asking you guys questions, period periodically on my instagram to where you guys can send in questions if you guys got questions that you want to ask people that i'll be doing interviews in so this is a little bit different um for those of you who know i was doing a couple podcasts before and then i decided to kind of switch it up and then bring a co-host on because i felt like it'd be a better vibe it'd be you know just better with you know me and my wife on here so i felt like that you could bring out the qualities that i kind of don't have and then I can kind of bring out something that you don't have, and then we can kind of let you know blend them together. So work as a team. Work as a team, exactly, exactly. So, whew, I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. Um, I really wanted to do this because I felt like everybody else was sharing their story, and I felt like I felt a little wrong that I haven't shared mine. Like I, I guess in like the podcast format. So I felt like I wanted to do it. So yeah, season two, which is gonna be, I would say like mm. like. I don't think it's going to be any seasons after this. I think we're just going to just keep going with the podcast. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. yeah, so let us know how you guys like it. Um, if you guys have any gripes or complaints, let us know. Is the volume too loud? Just go ahead and let us know. Uh, this is our very first episode. Yeah, so give us some criticism, some exactly. feedback. We we won't be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I do want to just point out and say, Kevin, I am proud that you've been doing these interviews. You've been doing an amazing job. Thank you, thank you. I think that it is very inspirational mm-hmm. of you and of everybody else that you have interviewed. Um, t- for everyone to really come on here and share your story and really have it on YouTube and on this platform, it it's going to show a lot of people out there that are going through the same situation and inspire them and really give them hope and faith that you know the days are gonna get better yes everybody goes through something different and everybody's journey is different but at the same time you, this is a community that you're building that you guys can connect and really stick together help each other out inspire one another and just be there for one another because it's it's very i think it's one of a kind for okay. sure Thank so I you. am proud of you. That's all Thanks, I wanted man. to say before we get started. Okay. Now, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That felt good. That felt good. Thank you. Now, just to get started, how long ago was your accident? Ooh, okay. How so, long ago? How long have you been in a wheelchair? I've been in a wheelchair ten years. Ten years. Well, not exactly ten years, but it'd be ten years in. Let me see. We in June. It'd be ten years in three months. 10 years and three months. Now, does it feel months. like 10 years? Oh, you want to know what? It does. It does feel it like does. 10 years? It does. It does. Um, or do you feel like time flew by and you're like, dang, 10 years? It doesn't seem like 10 years. Time definitely flew by. Time definitely flew by, but it does feel like it was 10 years, though. Uh, I don't really know how I can you know, better explain that, but mm-hmm. you know, f- I feel like for a long time I was kind of... I was kind of just letting the days go past me until I realized so much time had went past mm-hmm. to where I was just like, you know what, man? Like, it, it can't be worse than this. So that's when I pretty much uh, I started doing it for myself. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So let's get into the <laughs> nitty gritty. I'm just kidding. No. Okay. Let's just, you know, tell us about where 
you were at what city were you living in living in where okay. were you from mm -hmm. like where where'd you grow up where were you at okay Let, a little bit about where you were at in life when your accident happened okay so where i was at or where i'm from both you <laughs> okay. want to know both because okay. i you know okay so i'm from a, a country town in virginia called hopewell um i wouldn't you know what it's a small big it's a small big town mm -hmm. um I grew up there, and then when I was 14, we ended up moving to Georgia. So I lived in Georgia for about, like, seven years, and then from there, I ended up joining the military. So Okay. How old were you when you joined the military? I, w I was 19. I was 19. So I was a year out of high school. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Did you always want to join the military? Was that in your, like, were, growing up, oh, I'm going to join the military when I'm older? Mm. Like, was that your career? No, uh, no. I really wanted to play baseball. So I was, like, really good at baseball, like, really good at baseball. Mm -hmm. And when I got to high school, I was still really, really good at baseball because, I mean, me and Cassandra went to high school together. And, you know, once I started playing baseball, that was, like, my first year playing for that school. Like, I'm pretty sure you've seen how everybody kind of reacted to me being actually good at baseball. Yeah, people yeah. were like, they, they knew you on the baseball team. Yeah, and like the teachers that hated me kind of was like, you know what, he, he's kind of doing the right thing right now. He, you know, on the field, yeah, exactly. but not in the classroom. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So um, I really wanted to play baseball when I was growing up. Okay. Um, I love baseball. I don't really like watching it too much no more. I feel like, I feel like because I ain't make it, I, I feel like I hold some type of grudge. Yeah. Like that. But I feel like I only didn't make it because of the town I was in. I feel like mm -hmm. if I was in a different town that took it a lot more serious than the town that I was at, I feel like I would have definitely made it at least to college just for playing baseball because that's how good I was. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you joined when you were 18. 19. 19? <laughs> yeah. 19. Mm -hmm. And you were you scared joining the, mili the military? What branch? Oh, okay. So, so... You know what, and to add, answer your other question as well, no, mm -hmm. I did not want to join the military my whole life. It was something that, to be honest, I never, to be honest, I never thought about joining the military until me and you had a conversation about joining the National Guard. Oh, yeah. You remember that? I had an idea of joining the National Guard. Uh -huh. I was like, you know what, it would be cool if I joined the National Guard. Yes. But it never happened. <laughs> yeah, so that was the first time I ever thought about joining the military. And then as I was going through school, I just realized that school really isn't for me. Um, I, like, I, I really felt like I didn't have no sense of direction that I wanted to go in into. And I felt like I, I didn't want to go to no trade schools. I didn't want to do any of that. And I felt like the military would have been the best option for me. So I looked throughout all the branches. I determined which one I felt like was the best one. And that's the one I went for. Air Force. So I joined I joined the United States Air Force at 19, and it was one of the best decisions I could have ever made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. How long after you joined the military did you get into your accident? When your accident happened, how mm -hmm. long were you in the military for? Uh, like three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So like three and a half years. Okay. Mm -hmm. did, and what, did you go overseas? Did okay. you... Okay, so were you relocated from the city you were in? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I joined the military, at first I ended up uh, moving to Texas. So that's where you go through basic training at, uh -huh. and then that's when you also go through tech school at. So I went through basic training, and then from there I got shipped to a base that was called Shriver Air Force Base in Colorado. So I ended up going okay. to Colorado, and Colorado is a beautiful city. A very beautiful city, and that's pretty much where I was stationed at. Yeah. Um, in 2012, I ended up deploying to Afghanistan, and then from there, I ended up coming back, and that's when the whole story happened. So, okay, yeah, and just a few questions that mm -hmm. um, you got from the from your Instagram mm -hmm. post. Okay, um, I feel like it's an appropriate time for me to ask right now. Ooh, Somebody okay. asked, "Tell us about your mental health journey from before your accident." And how was it until, I guess you could say, until now? Okay. So how was your mental health journey? I mean, entering into the military, I know that can also be kind of tough on anyone. Yeah. So give us your thoughts. Mm, well, to be honest, I really didn't know anything about mental health. Like, I didn't know, like, I really did. I, I honestly, I didn't know anything about it. I was, I was clueless to it. Um, 
it's not something that, that I would say, like, black people talk about in their household. Because if you guys don't know, I'm black and Puerto Rican. My dad's Puerto Rican and my mom's black. But it was something that we never, ever really talked about in our household. So it was something I really didn't even know about. So I, I honestly, I just didn't know about it. And, and I honestly feel like that that's a problem for a lot of us out there. It's just mental health isn't really a thing that a lot of us probably take seriously because we don't really talk about it too much in our house. So whenever somebody's going through mental health, you know, I would say in the African community, in the African American community, it's kind of like brushed off, kind of, or they be like, "Hey, look, you'll get better," type, you know. But yeah. but in reality, like, I agree. It's it, like, I feel like we just didn't understand it. We still don't kind of understand it too much. And, I agree, yeah. and the and the fact that also in my culture, yeah. the Mexican community, we we joke around a lot, like, "Oh, quiere llorar, quiere llorar," meaning you know, she wants to cry, she wants, you know, mm-hmm. so we don't take it seriously. Yeah. Uh, but now, looking back, do you feel like your mental health was, you know, po- positive, negative? Were you iffy about how you were feeling, not always in a good mood, in a bad mood? Or were you always a happy person, always smiling? Like, how would you describe yourself? I, you know what? I felt like I was, I was definitely a very happy person. I felt like that the bad things in my life came to me. From things that I was doing, so through my own choices, but you know, I really feel like that I was like a really like a happy go lucky person. Like I, I, I was always excited. I was always smiling. But the choices that I was making was pretty much is what kind of led to. Do you feel like destructive stuff? That was karma. Definitely, definitely. Um, Your accident was karma. Um, or how you were feeling was karma. I. Maybe a little bit of both, a little bit of both. I, I definitely feel like, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. And what are some examples of those bad decisions or bad choices you made in life that you feel? I know for for example, one time we got in trouble in high school. You almost got me in trouble too. Okay. That was a bad situation. But you know, sometimes those bad decisions. What is in simplest form? Yeah, I guess what right. is something that you feel you wouldn't do again, just to not bring <laughs> bad karma on you? Uh, well, I definitely wouldn't do that again. Um, so pretty much, I got in trouble with the law in high school, and I kind of like Cassandra. Cassandra kind of got drugged into it. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely wouldn't do that again. But um, it was honestly the choices that I was making all came that, that came down to one thing, and it was always women. Like, um, I was just always cheating. Um, I don't know. I guess it, it was just a big ego problem. Like, I feel like that that's where my problems lie at. It's always lied in my ego and my pride. And I feel like that those were, like, the biggest problems that I had because some of the choices that I made were because of that, because of those two. So, yeah. Okay. And when you were in the military, were you in a relationship? I mean, obviously, we, after high school, me and you yeah. kept in touch, but we were not together. Yeah. I moved to California, so just to kind of put that out there. Um, but um, for anyone out there, like, your story, when you were in the military, were you single? Were you out, you know, hanging with the boys all the time? Or were you in a relationship? You, how was it? <sighs> okay, so... This is something that I never shared on, I never shared period on the channel. So this is something that you guys really don't even know about me. So when I was in the military, yes, I was in a relationship and I ended up getting married. So the person that I ended up getting married to, we were friends like prior to that. So prior to me even moving to Temple where I met Cassandra, me and her were friends in that town that I lived in and me and her were kind of like best friends. So I ended up getting married to her so yes i was in a relationship and that was something that i kind of never shared well i shared that i was in a relationship i just never shared that i was married to her and yes for those of you out there cassandra knew uh i it was just something that 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 i never really kind of wanted to share because it was like i guess that that relationship and everything that happened it was it was kind of a lot for me so i felt like i never really wanted to really get into it on camera and i really had to talk about it to people so i never really ever shared it yeah. Thank you for sharing. 
Um, <laughs> I don't know, right? It was a lot. I feel, I feel like you have a lot of pressure on you mm. when you speak about that. Now, the month of your accident, how was that month for you? Like, how was your life, you know, during that month of, what month did you get? Um, September. Hurt? September. September, yeah. And 2012. 2012. So, September yeah. 2012. And what was, what were you doing? What were you up to that month? You know, that's kind of like the end of the summer type, you know, yeah. so, season. So at the beginning of that month, I was actually deployed. So I was in Afghanistan. So it was just, it was just a lot. It was really just a lot going on. And, you know, like we talked about before, karma. Karma is definitely real. And I found out firsthand, um, Is it's great. Is I don't know. It's just it's just crazy talking about it because I feel like that the only person I really talked about it to was like you and maybe some of my family members. But at the time I was deployed, and again, karma. Um, I had got caught cheating before I got deployed, so I was really going through a lot in my relationship at the time, all the way leading up to me getting deployed. So it was like a lot of things that were being said prior to me getting deployed that I felt like. You know, maybe me being kind of a part would kind of fix. And, um, yeah, so I was deployed at that moment. And then and then what was the question? What were you up to that? Like, or, oh. you know, you, you do. Oh. Okay, so you, you are okay. saying that before you did get deployed, you were going through relationship problems. Yes. Everybody yeah. goes through relationship yeah. problems, so it's understandable. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, sometimes you do think, okay, maybe – Distance will make our heart grow fonder. Yeah. Isn't that what they say? So yeah. you you thinking, okay, maybe me being, being deployed is going to help our relationship. Yeah. Um, give us some space. Um, now, when you were deployed, what? how long were you overseas? I was overseas for three, you like, said four, three? No, like four and a half months. Four and a half? Okay. Yeah, I was at, yeah, and I came back early because of a situation that happened uh -huh. when I was going through everything with my wife. So that situation actually ended up leading to me being able to go home early oh so, okay yeah so i went home a month and a half early now this were, was this like mental health problems yes yes These yes were mental health yes problems. it was mental health problems so pretty much like i said we i never really knew what mental health was until i joined the military because you know in the military you talk about it they talk about it so it's something that you kind of learn about but at the same time you know it's it's hard to really I would say, like, kind of, like, self-diagnose yourself. Like, oh, damn, like, maybe I might be depressed or maybe I'm going through something, you know? Like, because you really don't know. Like, like at that time, I f just felt like, you know, like uh, like I was sad, okay? So, you know, during my deployment, my deployment was actually, like, good at first. Like, it was, like, really good. Mm -hmm. But then, like, over time, it was, like, the person that I was with kind of, like, stopped answering the phone. She stopped, like, taking my phone calls. And it was, like, kind of, like, weird. And, like... While you were it overseas, was, yeah, yeah. So, so it was like, it was like, I, like it was a lot. It was a lot because over was there, it making you feel depressed? H hell yeah, hell yeah. I was hella depressed because you know over there you really ain't got like too many people. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm there with my team. I was there with a 13 man team. So those are the only 13 people that I was with, and it, it wasn't like that. Many of us was really close, so it ain't like I really had anybody to talk to. I really didn't have any friends that was really with me on that team to where, like, I was close enough to really just sit down and talk to. You know what I mean? And, like, at that time, like, like I, I really didn't talk to my parents, like, about, like, stuff like that. You yeah. weren't you weren't able to vent yeah, to exactly. anybody. Exactly. So you exactly. were holding it all in. Exactly. And that's something that you do not want to do, and I didn't find out until, like, it was too late. Like, it's, like... Meaning, oh. what's too late? Like, leading up to me being paralyzed. Like, it was, like, like my dad always tried to talk to me, and I just didn't want to talk. But that mm -hmm. that also goes back to the whole pride and ego thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like I felt like I just held it so close to me, like, my pride and my ego, that, like, I didn't, like, I, I guess I just never wanted to look like a sucker to nobody. Right. You know, and, like, getting cheated on ain't something that you want to talk about. And, and it wasn't really like I even knew I was getting cheated on. It's just at the time I just realized, or like, you know, she like she's not answering my phone calls no more. Like, she's hanging out with this dude. And it's just like, 
Like, I don't know. It was just like, I, I felt like it was like just slowly kind of driving me crazy because, you know, I'm working 15 hour shifts. I'm working like 15 hour shifts over there, like for real. And like, it, you know, it's, it's real over there. You know, it's, it's bombs going off all the time. You know, we getting attacked all the time. Like they sh- trying to shoot mortars on the base all the time. It's, it's, it's a very stressful environment. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and then at, at the same time, you know, you want a different sleep schedule than everybody else. So when you up, they sleep. And then, you know, when you. As in here in the States. Exactly. You know, and the parents are on a different time mm-hmm. zone. You're in a different time zone. Yeah. It's, you know, like the food different. Everything, like in those situations, everything kind of like add up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so like j- just like the littlest thing yeah. that really don't seem that big can be big over there because like things just kind of like tack on, you know, and then also like the separation too. like you're separated from everybody that, you know. Yeah. Uh, now, looking back, I guess, within that time and moment that you were in, mm-hmm. would you tell yourself, man, I wish I could have just talked to my dad about it? Or, man, I wish I could have just talked to my mom about it. Let me, you know, so maybe they could have kind of helped me clear my head or make Mm -hmm. me feel like there's no there's no reason for me thinking that this is the end of all. Um, Would you tell yourself anything or would you kind of Mm. change anything in that moment in time? Yeah, I wish I would have really talked to my dad. Like I said, it just re- it re- really wasn't anything that, like, I don't know. I guess, like, me and him really ever talked about. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's just, like, I didn't know how to. Even if I did, I didn't know how to. Yeah. You know, I'm a young man. Like, I, I was, like, 22. So, I didn't know how to vent. I feel like I'm still trying to learn. I'm, <clears throat> I feel like I'm still trying to learn how to vent. Yeah. You know, I'm 31 now. Like, I'll be 32, and I, and I feel like I still don't 100% know how to vent. Life is, you know, life experiences make you just, it kind of puts you in a shock sometimes where you don't even yeah. know how to even bring up a conversation mm-hmm. to your own parents to where yeah. you're like, damn, like, I'm really going through this life. Yeah. This thing called life, you know, exactly. and it's it's hard to really talk about it. So I could understand and then not being around anybody. Mm-hmm. Um. But sometimes your your family is literally always going to be there, no matter what you are going through. Yeah. So if I this right here is for anyone out there, if you feel like you have nobody to talk to, literally your closest friends, your family, those are the people you should really go to and talk to. It's yeah. okay. Like, you know, life is life. Everybody goes through something. So mm-hmm. don't take that for granted. Some people will, you know, would wish that their mom or their dad would be here to talk to. Yeah. And f- for you out there, if you do have your mom or your dad out there, talk to them, even if you're going through it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so you come back from overseas. Yeah. You go back to, and I guess this is, you're leaving your deployment time early yeah so you're coming back you come back and you're back in where you're stationed at in colorado yeah so how is that coming back what are you thinking like on the way back like do you guys fly on regular you know Mm -hmm. commercial i mean like okay with regular people or you have a special okay to fly back i guess to the states yeah okay so flying okay so Flying over there, we took this airline called Ryan Airline, but it was only military on the plane. Mm-hmm. And every place that we got to, there was only military on the plane. And But flying back, you see, flying back was a little bit different because we flew on C-130s, I, I believe. So I don't know what that means. It's a it, it's an airplane. <laughs> okay. So, I was like, <laughs> I don't yeah, know so, what a C-130 so that, is. And again, and again, it was just with people that was in the military, but it was people, I was with people that got hurt in the military. So it was people that, oh, I see. yeah. So it was like people that, like some people had like back issues, like some, like 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 some people were messed up. And people were, were that were hurt. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it was like kind of like a medical flight out, kind of. Now you were sad and yeah. in, a, in a you know in a sad mood. Mm-hmm. Were you happy on the way back? Like, okay, I'm going home. Like, were you happy? I would have uh, been happy. Uh, yes and no. 
That's and no because I, I I didn't know what I was going home to. Okay. So it wasn't like I was going home and then I was gonna be able to take leave, you know, back home. Like no, I was going back home to Colorado and you know and going back to work, pretty much or um, not really. Well, yes and no, yes and no, but I feel like one thing that kind of played like a big part in it too was that I was at a base that was kind of undermanned, so. We worked all the time, and they really didn't let too many people take leave. So once I finally got out, I, I had, like, over 100 and something days of leave saved up. So that's pretty much my whole time in the military, not being able to take leave. So I never really got to go home to my family, really. I did one time, but it was like I kind of, like, snuck out for, like, two days. I only went I only went home for a weekend, and that was for my sister's baby shower for yeah. my nephew. Okay. So I felt like just and – then I, and then we didn't get to take leave before my deployment because – Again, we was under man, but then somebody ended up taking leave that was supposed to go on another deployment. He ended up taking leave and then not coming back. So it kind of like ruined it for everybody. So they was like, yeah, like we don't want nobody kind of like leaving before your deployment. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I mean, I was like, I don't know. Like, I didn't know what I was coming home to because at the same time, you know, I'm still dealing with my other relationship and. She's not really even picking well, up the phone. Your relationship at the time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you didn't say you guys were not on talking terms. Like I said, look, we was on talking terms, but it was like like it was like it was cool one day and then the next day it was just like I just stopped hearing from her. Like for real for real. Yeah. Like it was like it was crazy. Like it was like like that's how fast it happened. Like it was like it was like I just stopped hearing from her. So it was like, yeah, we were kind of on talking terms, but it was just like she wasn't really picking up the phone no more. Like she literally like just stopped picking up the phone. And what about your family? Did they know you were going through relationship problems at the time? Um, yeah. Well, or yeah. did they know that you were leaving deployment early? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what were what were they? What did they know about you at the time? They really only kind of knew what I told them. Like, I really didn't tell them much, but my mom kind of knew. My mom, you know, like, she kind of knew what I was going through. And um, and I, I would just say that my mom kind of knew. So, like, they pretty much had, like, you know, some type of gist of what was going on and everything. So, yeah, like, my family knew. And, like, yes, my family was there for me to talk to. Yeah. It just, I really, like, like I said, I just really didn't know how to vent. I really didn't know how to open up. I, I really didn't, didn't know how to be part. vulnerable. Yeah, exactly. You didn't really exactly. initiate anything. Yeah, you're right. And so you got back, you got back home, you're by yourself now? No, so, okay, so during that whole time that she wasn't picking up the phone and then, like, me being in route, mm-hmm. okay, so once we end up leaving from Afghanistan, we went to, I think we went straight to Germany. So from Germany, like, I was there for, like, I would say almost a week. Like, I was in Germany for a week, so the whole time, like, I'm trying to, like, call her. Like, she really not picking up the phone, and then when she do, she's talking about, I can't talk. And, like, you know, like, just, like, little stuff like that. So, yeah. so like, you know, but, like, I'm trying to convince her, like, you know, like, because whenever I deployed, like, like me and her, like, we both lived in Colorado. So, whenever I deployed, she went back to Georgia, like, where we were from, she went back to Georgia to um pretty much just, just kind of, like, so we could save money. So, like, that's kind of what, like, some people do. You know, like, if you got, like, a little apartment or something like that, like, like you ain't really got nothing structured there, you know, like, they spouse or, like, you know, like, they partner will just go back home so both of y'all can kind of save money because over there, you're making more money and it's just kind of something that you kind of want to save up. Yeah. Yeah. So, you get back home and you're alone, right? Or you uh, didn't have nowhere to stay. No, so, okay, so once I finally get back, like, throughout that time of me calling her, it's like, I kind of convinced her to come back. So, like, like meet me in Colorado when I get there. So, whenever I touch down, she, she, like, she's there. Like, she's not there whenever I get off the plane, but she's in, like, a hotel room. Oh, okay. Mm Mm-hmm. So, you get back to Colorado. Yeah. And you pretty much have your stuff in a hotel. Like now you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're back in the States, you're in a hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, now what, like what's going on? Like, is your, is, I, I would say is your relationship chaotic? Like what, are, what is, um, 
what are your plans? You know, now that you're back, you know, mm. you were you, you were kind of in a depressive state. Yeah. Couldn't really do your job overseas, mm. so they sent you back mm-hmm. early. And now now what? Now you're here. You're supposed to be feeling better, getting better, right? Mm. Yeah. Um what are your plans for the week? You know, okay, you guys are in a hotel. Now do you guys plan on moving in together and then like getting an apartment or what are, like what is going okay. on okay so at that time all my stuff was in storage but it was in storage in Colorado so whenever I get back like I guess I'm like I'm trying to ask her like questions about like what's going on like you know like who you talking to you know like yeah. pretty much like just question her like why you won't picking up the phone and stuff like that and like she was just like lying the whole time and like I don't know really just not I guess I'm being like she just really wasn't straight up. So, but but at that time, you know, like we were talking about being together and then, all, you know, like we were looking for places to go stay at. But when I went back, it wasn't really anything that was like available. Like, okay. like so all like the, so like that was kind of like stressful too. So, mm-hmm. you know, with me and her arguing and everything, every place that we go into to go look at as far as like apartment wise, nothing is available. And then. So that was frustrating. That too. And then, you know, everything was out of my, like, everything that was, like, better was kind of out of my price range. But that really wasn't, like, a big thing. Like, Mm -hmm. like that wasn't really, like, a big thing. But, you know, like I said, it's, like, things just add up. Yeah. So, yeah. But, like, yeah, it was definitely really chaotic when I got back because, you know, we arguing the whole time. I just, you know, I know she's lying to me. I'm catching her in, like, little lies. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people can relate, you know? When, you know, that yeah, situation when you're arguing and yeah. relationship problems. Yeah. Um, so the day of your accident, what were you doing? Okay. How long after you land till you actually get into your accident? Mm. Like, how long was that? Okay, so when I land, I think it was like, I think it was like on my mom's birthday. I think it was like September 13th. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Mm-hmm. Or, let me see. It was somewhere around that day. Okay. It was somewhere around that date. Um, and like I said, me and her were just were just arguing the whole time, like while looking for places. And then like at the same time, remember like we're standing in the hotel room. You know, hotel rooms really aren't cheap. So like that's kinda like adding up too. So like the whole time throughout that whole thing that we're like going through that, like she ends up leaving again. So she ended up leaving going back to Georgia. Okay. Yeah, right. So it was like yeah, so it was like like, she just bought a ticket, like, randomly and, like, just, like, pretty much just said, oh, yeah, I'm leaving. Like, you know what I mean? So, it was, like, it, it was really, like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, so, when she ended up leaving, that was exactly a week from the time that I got paralyzed. So, then, like, that whole time, like, I ended How long up, after you, how long was it when she left? Like, you. Like, seven days later. Exactly seven. So, like, a yeah, week exactly she like, left and then yeah. a week later you got. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. During that whole week, like, you know, like, I'm trying to call her again. She ain't picking up the phone because she now she really back into the town that pretty much that she was cheating in. So now she just really cheating now. And like, like, I guess it's like kind of like in the open now. And it's like, I'm like, like, really, I can't do anything because I'm in the military. So it's not like I can really just go home because, you know, Colorado is like hella far from Georgia. So it's not like I can really go home. So it was like literally like I was just stuck in one place. And I really just couldn't do anything about it, and that shit was really just driving me crazy. Like it was, yeah, it was, it was like it was really just driving me crazy. Like because I felt like you, I couldn't do anything. What were you doing during the day? I mean, what you were waking up, eating, was, and just like in a hotel. Okay, so or so I was only in a hotel work. for like a day, like a day or two after she left, and then I ended up having to move on base. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I had to go on base, and, like, that was, like, hella depressing because I ain't never lived on base, too. So it was, like, they kind of, like, made me go on base, so that was kind of, like, depressing a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I would wake up, and, like, I would go to work, but it was, kind of, uh, it was like, light duty, so I really wasn't doing anything. I was in, like, supply. Oh, so okay. So for, like, for those of you out there who know, like, I was security forces in the Air Force, so it's pretty much, like, cops. Okay. Uh, like, we were, like, cops. Yeah. So, but, you know, when all that happened, then I couldn't arm up anymore. So I was like on light duty. So I was in like supply, like you know, like doing like little things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So the the day that you got into your accident, did mm-hmm. you work that day? How I guess 
let us know what what went down that day what so i guess you're living on base you wake up one day and what happens what's what's the plan for the day okay like so so throughout that whole week like i'm just really like hella depressed like just having all types of like suicidal thoughts and everything to the point where i asked one of my friends I was like, hey, can you just hold my gun for me? Because, like, I just, you know, like, I ain't really in the best headspace. Like, and, like, I felt like, I felt like, you know, like, when I was trying to call her, I felt like that I was, like, kind of, like, making stuff up. So, I, you know, like, I was telling her, like, you know, like, man, like, I feel like killing myself. And in reality, I kind of did in a way. But in reality, you know, like, I was just trying to, like, just throw some, like, like, I guess I was just trying to, like, like, add some type of shock in there. To where it was just like, you know, like, like, hopefully, like, she was like, oh, my God, you know, like, and, and then come back. Yeah. And, and, like, it was, like, a lot of that to the point where, like, I felt like I said it enough to where, like, I brought it into existence, you know? And that's why I, I try to be careful with what I say because a lot of the things that I say really do come into existence. And what's so crazy is that, you know, like, sometimes I would just say it to myself and like it would really come true, but like it got to a point where I had to start telling you stuff because everything I said would be coming true. You know and what they say: speak it into existence. Anything yes. you speak will, you know. Yeah, but it it seemed like it was like just so, bad stuff. So speak positivity. Exactly. Always. Exactly. Exactly. And it was like Think everything. It. it was like everything I spoke that was bad just came true to the point where you saw it and you was like, "Look, look stop saying that." I was like, "You know what? Shut up." Uh, like. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Because what I like it's so crazy. What I say be coming true sometimes. A lot of the times, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so you were you were having suicidal thoughts that mm-hmm. week, and you wake up oh one God. day, and what like what is your plan for that day? So I'm sorry because I know I'm all over the place, but. But it's just something that I like. I never really got to share my story in detail, like yeah. how I'm sharing now. Right. Like, like I'm literally telling you everything that that was going on, everything You're that telling, happened. You know, exactly. The so, audience out there. Exactly. So that day I woke up, like, and and then you guys, you, like, <sighs> all right. So, like I said, I never really dealt with depression. So I don't know. I just I just started doing dumb shit, man. I just, like I started cutting my wrist. Like it was like just some dumb shit, only because I felt like that. That's what like depressed people did. And when did you cut yourself? When you uh, were like just throughout that week, like throughout that week after mm-hmm. your wife at the time left. Yeah. So like, I, like I was doing that shit, and then that day, that day it was like, yeah, I was hella. De- I was really depressed, but I, yeah, I did go to work. So I think I worked from maybe around. And like, nobody at work noticed. That you no, were, that no you had cuts on your arm. No, because you know you wear. You wear ABU, so like at the time, like at the time we so wear. Oh, you're ABUs, wearing a uniform, which is a whole yeah. So it go all the way up to the sleeve and everything. All, all you know, your neck is everything is covered up, you know. Like, but but you know, one time I went to PT, I thought that they would see, I thought that they would see, but nobody saw. But you know, in reality, you know, like you try to and hide stuff like that. Sometimes you know, it's crazy. I feel like it's normal, like. Like if, the, if those people did a physical and if they did see a cut on you, like cuts, they probably see that all the time to where they don't even say anything. Nah, if anybody would have seen, nah, nah not I those types know. of cuts. Now you, you know what? But 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 what's crazy is that, like, I ain't gonna lie. Some of the cuts that I be seeing on you sometimes, like I feel like that. You know, if I was somebody <laughs> looking from the outside, I'd be oh, like yeah. yo. Yo, she getting abused at home or something like that, but it's, it's really all my it, dogs. it come from the dogs. Yeah, like and I like, get bruised easy. Exactly, but in reality, something like this—if somebody would have saw that, they would have known that yeah. that was kind of like self-inflicted. You know what I mean? So, yeah, Dang. yeah. okay. But, but yeah, so like that, that day were, was shitty. Yeah, that that week you were going, you were really going through it, yeah. and at all during that week, did you ever think that you were going to be paralyzed? Did it run through your? Were you thinking about killing yourself? I guess is my question. Uh, yeah, you were thinking yeah. about killing yourself. I, yes, but I never really had plans to go through with it. Like I said, look, the power of the tongue, like this shit, is really crazy. Because, like I said, I feel like I spoke it into existence. It was like I was saying it to her to kind of like scare her, 
to the point where like you know as like, a tactic to bring her back exactly exactly and like like I said like I said it and like I was saying it but I didn't really ever think about really fully going through with it yeah yeah so I mean yeah I was really I was I was really going through it though like I was really like I was like I like, like did you, you know, reach out really to your parents it. I don't even think I was reaching out to anybody I just what I really I, it was only one person I wanted to talk to and it was her and like I I probably wasn't like accepting people's phone calls. I I wasn't talking to anybody. Like honestly, nobody. Nobody. Now, when you told your friend, "Can you hold my gun?" Yeah. What did your friend say? He was like, "Yeah, fool, I got you." So like, he, he really didn't think nothing. He didn't like, question anything. Um, like, oh well, why do you need me to hold it? Like, I know? mean, I mean, he knew he knew I was going through something because. Me and him both was on light duty, so he was mm-hmm. on light duty because I guess he was feeling some type of way because I think his dad had just died. Oh, okay. So he was on light duty as well. So you know, like we pro- we both was probably just going through something to the point where it's, something you know, different, where you yeah. kind of understand, like yeah, yeah. And then like I man to man, man to man, like you don't it, get sentimental. Yeah, yeah. Emotionally, it's, especially if it's somebody who you not express like yourselves. With. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so he didn't say. So he. No, he didn't say anything. So he had your gun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I had two guns. Oh, so but, you had two guns. But yeah, he had he had one of my guns, and then the other one was in storage with all my clothes and stuff. Okay. And what? So again, the day that you got into your accident, you woke up. What mm-hmm. did you do? Okay, so that day I went to work. So I went to work from like eight thirty to I believe four thirty. Okay. Four thirty maybe or eight thirty to five. You know, eight thirty to four thirty. But so you know, you had work. Exactly, exactly, and I won't really do nothing at work. I won't really do much at work. But after work, I think we got. Were you sad? Were you happy that day? Like, what were you doing? Like at sad. work, you were he- sad. Yeah, hella sad. Just hella depressed. Like, just you know, like I'm going back doing a whole different job. Like, well, it wasn't a whole different job. It was within my job. It was within my career field. Mm-hmm. But like I said, it was like light duty. So like I'm working in supply, like filing stuff. And like you know, like doing stuff like that, it was it, you know, like just like that was hella depressing too. At the same time, not saying that I wanted to go back to doing my job because in no way was I really capable of even doing my job effectively. Yeah, you know. And then at the same time, you know, in my career field, you arm up with two guns, so you got a, a gun on your hip, and then you got your rifle. Mm-hmm. So I would like I couldn't have went back. I could I know for a fact I couldn't have went back to doing that at that time, but. Like, I guess just going, doing that was really just depressing, I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. After work, did you go straight home? Did you go get something to eat? Okay, so. What what, what, what were your plans for after oof. work? Okay, so after work, like, I was getting to the point where I was saying I was going to kill myself so much that I was starting to believe it. But You were saying it to yourself in your head? I was or, saying I was yeah well not to my, not to just myself but I was saying it to her as well mm. to the point where I really kind of started believing it yeah and then sorry about that and then um when I got off of work the storage unit closed at five thirty okay so so we got off at four thirty but we all had to ride back together mm-hmm. and we're in a restricted area okay so. We got to, you know, like, leave the restricted area, pretty much go. I think we had to go, like, to, like, the gas station or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then we went. But when they was at the gas station, I just ended up just leaving from the gas station, just going to my car. So that really in itself could have been, like, a little suspicious as well because I just left them at the gas station and just went to my car that was, like, 200 yards that way and just started walking instead of just waiting. So I was like, you know what? Because one of my friends, they got tasked for, like, a – like a last minute deployment, it was like real quick. I think something was going on in Africa, and like they needed people over there, so it was like they was just like, "Hey, look, uh, we need a team to go." And he, like he, like they grabbed him, and they was like, "All right, we was going." So he was leaving, like I think like the next day or something, and uh, he was like, "Man, look, let's go out, let's go out before I uh, leave." And then I was like, "All right, look, all right, that's cool, but let me go get some of my stuff, and let me go get my gun out of my storage." Because, you know, we were going downtown. So I didn't have any clothes or anything. All I had was my uniforms. So all my clothes and everything was in the store. So I was like, all right, look, I'm going to go to my storage unit. Because they close at 530. Because, I again, I live like 30 minutes from 
Like, well, not that I lived 30 minutes, but my base was kind of like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So, so it takes a while. Yeah, it took a while to actually get there. So I had to like pretty much rush back and then pretty much go get myself out of storage. So that's what I ended up going to go do. Okay. Yeah. So you went to your storage unit. Yep. Grab clothes. Mm-hmm. You grabbed your gun. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, your thoughts were, you know, going out tonight. Yeah, going out. Mm-hmm. You know, taking my strap. Yeah, well, for protection. Yeah, yeah. Um, cause downstairs be, I mean, not downstairs, downstairs. But, but I guess like downtown be like a little dangerous. So I was like, you know what? Let me just go grab my other gun because I have my friend. And that's one of my downtown guns. Colorado. Yeah, downtown Colorado. So I was okay. like, you know, what? and then like the army be down there too. They always be starting shit. So I was, just, I mean, I ain't really bringing for the army, but I just, I guess I just wouldn't just grab it. I don't know. Yeah. Just, yeah, but but that's why I wouldn't grab it though. And then you were headed back to your spot, okay. Your, okay. the base. No, actually, I was I was actually going to Taco Bell. Oh, okay. yeah. So I was like, you know what? I was yeah. So I was like, let me go get my food and then go get something to eat. And then I was just gonna go back to my room, get dressed, and, and like just get ready. Yeah, go out with them. But it didn't happen like that. What happened? It didn't happen like that. So like pretty much right when I leave the storage unit, like from the time everything happened was like literally like three minutes. So when I leave the store, so when I'm at the storage unit, I just grab some clothes and I grab my gun. My gun was a revolver. So it was a different type of gun than my other gun. Okay. So I went, grabbed it, threw everything on the seat, hopped on the road. So when I hopped on the road, I I got the music blast and I never forget this. I was listening. Like I was listening to Drake, to Drake and Two Chains, like No Lie. Mm -hmm. So like that was playing. Like, really mm-hmm. loud. Mm-hmm. And then I was driving. I get off the exit, and then I come to a light. When I come to a light, the gun almost slides off the seat. Mm-hmm. So I grab it. I grab it with my right hand. Were you driving fast? Mm, I could have been. I could have been. You know how I drive. I could have been. So anything that was on the seat, like, you know how I drive. So anything that's pretty much on the seat is probably going to fall into the floor with the way that I drive. So... Mm-hmm. But a gun is kind of heavy. Well, I wouldn't think a gun is just gonna slide off because it's kind of heavy. So you would have to be driving fast. Well, remember, I put everything on the seat. So the clothes was on the seat first, and then the gun was on top of the clothes. So it was kind of like maybe like up at an angle to where if I'm driving fast, then it kind of would slide off. I mean, they don't know how I drive, but you know how I drive. Mm -hmm. So, so. Come on, like you know, anything that's in my passenger seat is probably gonna fall off because I'm always driving fast. Like I always drive fast. I don't know. I just like driving fast. I guess. So. So you come to the light. You think yeah. the gun's about to fall, and what do you do? So, so what happens is I grab it with my right hand, put it in my left hand. Mm-hmm. Right when I put it in my left hand, like, okay, so let me kind of explain this for you guys that's out there. When you going through something and you like really like like depressed, like you kind of like start becoming delusional. So it's like you can be in like a space where somebody tell you that the sky is green and you would probably believe it because of how delusional you like you are at that moment. You like is like it's it's something that I really can't really put into like, words. Yeah. Like you're like this guy is green. Yeah, exactly. It does but look a little green today. Exactly, but you're just so delusional that it's just nothing is really kind of registering. So whenever I grab the gun and put it in my left hand, remember I'm right. I'm right handed. So I put the gun on my left hand. As soon as I put the gun in my left hand, the craziest thought just comes to my head, and it's like put the gun to your chest and pull the trigger, and it won't go off. Yeah, and. Like, it happened so quick that I never really even got a chance to really even think it through to where I did it. And the music is playing. The music is blasting loud. And you're at a red light? I'm at a red light. Wait, you know, am I at a red light? No, no, no. No, I'm driving at this time because, like, yeah, so, so I was at the red light and I started driving. And once I have this thought... Like, there's another red light coming up as well. Mm -hmm. But once I have this thought, it's it's so quick that, you know, like, I you know, I pull off from the red light to where I pulled the trick. Like, I was so out of it that I didn't think that the gun was going to go off. I genuinely thought the gun would not go off because, like, I loaded it, like, a weird way, like, before I left. But, like, I opened it and looked at it before I uh, ended up leaving the storage unit. But 
but like if you if I like I looked at the gun in a certain angle to where you can kind of see if there's a bullet in there or not. And with the hole that I saw, it wasn't a bullet in that hole. But the gun goes this way, not not the opposite way. Mm. So once I seen that, I was like 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 that, I guess that kind of what kind of led me to really think about, oh, if I pull the trigger, it's not gonna go off. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know, like it was kind of like a you know, like a little rush, like a like a little type of drilling rush. Like I don't like it's like the dumbest shit, weirdest shit possible, but that's what happened. And then it happened so fast that I didn't even realize once I pulled the trigger, like, okay, so once it happened and I pulled the trigger, the the sound is so loud that my ears are just ringing now. So I'm just like, ah, because I didn't expect the gun to go off. So once that happened, mm-hmm. I turned the music off real fast. And then once I turned the music off, I turned around. So I turned around to go see because I thought that I shot my seat. Right? Like, mm-hmm. that's how fast it happened. I thought that I shot my seat, so I went to go turn around to go check my seat. And then right when I turned back around from checking my seat like this, because I went like this because I'm driving like this, I went like that. Yeah. And once I come back around like that, I lose my breath. And it's like, I, I like, it was like, I, I guess I just lost like all, like, like feeling in my body at that moment. And my head just dropped down. And then once it dropped down, I see this hole in my uniform. Mm. And then right when I see the hole in my uniform, it's like I'm trying to breathe. And then now I, I, I literally can't breathe. That's crazy. Yeah. So That's it was tough. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was tough. It was tough. Uh, so then you're out of breath. You're literally in the middle of the road mm. driving. Okay, so what happens? So, like, does the ambulance come? Mm-hmm. Okay, you're obviously by yourself. Yeah. So, do you you drop your head? You don't. You can't feel anything. Are you able to grab your phone, call nine one one? Like, what's mm. what happens right after that? Okay, so right when I realize what happened, I get on my phone and I try to call my ex, which is my girl at the time. I try to call her. Of course, she didn't pick up the phone. She was with somebody, right? Which I later found out, right? So after that, I tried to call my mom. She didn't pick up the phone. And I literally just got off the phone with my dad. Like literally just got off the phone with my dad probably like 30 seconds before that. And I tried to call him. He didn't pick up because he was saying he was going to call my mom. Like I, okay. like, 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 I, I, like, I, like I guess he was just going to call my mom just about something, but... But I called him. He didn't pick up the phone. So I was like, man, like, like I only called him because I felt like I, I, I literally felt like I was dying, which I, I really was. Yeah. And um, Nobody I was like, picked up. yeah, it was like, I, I like I did that because I felt like I, I, well, not that I felt like I just didn't want to die alone. Yeah. And then like, I'm literally like, it's so hard to breathe. And it was, it was just like completely hard to breathe to the point where I was just like, like I said to myself, like. Look, if I'm gonna die right here, I'm not, like I. I literally said in my in my head, like I can't go out like no bitch, like like I can't panic. Mm-hmm. So I just I literally like just close my. Oh, okay. So before all that happened too, I felt like a like a bolt of like electrocution go from from like my back to my legs, mm-hmm. and it was like the only thing that I could think about. Because remember, I'm the car is moving at this time. The only thing that I could think about was just jam on the brakes. Yeah. So I like jammed on the brakes, and I'm just like, like, like it, like it literally felt like I got tased, like I was yeah. getting tased. But just the feeling of not being able to breathe kind of just trumps that. Mm-hmm. It's it's is 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 like I, again, it's something I really can't even really put into words. Like because I'm trying to breathe, you're trying to breathe, but at that time you're suffocating because now, okay, so when a bullet went in my chest. It bounced around and hit the. It, it, there's a sack that's around your heart that protects your heart. Yeah. It bounced around, hit that. From there, it bounced, hit my lung. Well, it went in, hit my lung, bounced from the lung, hit my heart, and then from my heart, it ended up landing like near my spine. So I'm guessing that's kind of like the like uh, like like electrocution. I'm kind of like like okay. kind of like referring to Sh- shock like wave. Shock. Exactly. That just injured your spinal cord. Mm-hmm. So for, from there, that, like that was the last time I really remember feeling my legs. And then I'm just, 
Like in my head I just said Man I can't go out Like no bitch And I just closed my eyes And I like I'm just like trying Like to just to focus On breathing And like In my head All I can see Is like a little Like a little pinhole And I feel like That's the only air That I'm getting It's like mm-hmm. From that pinhole Like li- literally From that pin Like just imagine Like holding a balloon Over your face And stabbing a needle Through it And like trying to Suck air through it And that's the wow. Like for real For real That's like, how you're breathing That's the only way I can explain it that's the only way I can explain. So, so like my whole thing was just to focus on that, so I don't panic. And then from there, I just remember just passing out, and the passing out. And then when I came back to, um, I was on the ground. I was on the ground outside the car. So I guess the people that was outside. So nobody really heard the gunshot, but everybody, I guess they thought that I was having a seizure because okay. they just seen me like slumped over in the car. Yeah. So I guess they end up pulling me out the car. And then when I come back to, I'm on the ground. So when, when I come back to, I really, uh, like, let me see. I don't know, like, like I don't remember having a hard time breathing. Mm-hmm. I just, I was trying to get up the whole time. I was like, hey, can y'all help me up? Can y'all help me up? But then at the same time, she's like, uh, can we get your phone password? Like, and like, I'm telling her my phone, like, I remember telling her my phone password. Yeah. But when, when I talked back to her later on, she said that I just, like I would just like saying, saying like gibberish. Anything. Yeah, I really wasn't saying too much. But the only thing I can get out was like I shot myself. I shot myself like that. I, like I was trying to tell them, mm-hmm. like like I shot myself because like yeah, I didn't mean to, but it happened. So I really had to tell them like 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 I was like I was trying to tell them like what happened. And then like like I said, I'm trying to get up. I can't get up. I can't move my legs. But in my head, I didn't register that I was paralyzed. I just felt like. I guess this is what happens when you get shot. That's what you feel. Like yeah, like that's what I thought. That's what, what I was thinking. Feel. Yeah. So then you end up at the hospital. Mm-hmm. Okay, so from there yeah. I end up passing out again because, like I said, it was like kind of like hard to breathe, but it was like I don't know, like I really wasn't focused on that. Mm-hmm. I guess because now I I really couldn't. I was trying to get up. Yeah. So I ended up passing out again, and then when I came back too, I was on the ambulance, and I just remembered because I'm wearing my uniform too. Mm-hmm. I just remember them just cutting, like, I, I remember feeling, like, and hearing them cutting off my uniform. Oh. And, yeah, and then they put, like, a mask on me. Mm-hmm. They put a mask on me, and I'm telling her, like, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. They are probably then, trying to help you breathe. Exactly. But, but yeah, but the mask, even with the mask, I couldn't breathe. Mm. So, from there, I ended up passing out again. And then when I came back, too, I woke, I woke up on an operating table. Wow. Yeah, so I woke up, and... Like my eyes were open, but I couldn't see anything but like a bright light, and like I t- and like and like the guy was like, uh, he was like, "What's your name?" and like, "How old are you?" and I'm trying to talk to him, and then I tell him I'm like, "I'm cold," like like I'm cold, and he was like, he was like, "Well, we were expecting you," and, and we warmed up the table, and then from there, like I just I I woke up three weeks later. You woke up three weeks later. Three weeks later. So were you in a coma so for what, three weeks, or what? Were, why did it take three weeks for you to come back to life? I would say because they 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 ended up inducing a coma. So oh okay, yes. they induced a coma. Yeah, on you. so pretty much they made me they they gave me you know like sleep medication to where I would be out for that long because I guess they just said that the pain was just so severe that if I would have came back to in that time, my body probably wouldn't went in a shock because of how much pain. So I, I think I had like four chest tubes. Um, wow. Yeah, I had a trach in. So anybody that knows, look, look, if you got a trach in, it had to be serious. Yeah. You know, because a trach pretty much, like they put a trach in, like to where it's just like, I think that's kind of like the last resort to really kind of get you oxygen. To where like they got to shove something, like they got to cut you open right here and like shove something down your throat. You know what I mean? So like it was like, yeah, and, like I was cut open like, so I got like this big old T across my chest. So I'm pretty much I'm pretty sure that they probably like like they just like they went in to go find a bullet. So from what I was told, they just took out my lung. They took out one of my lungs. So they took out my right lung. So they took out my lung because they said that they really didn't have enough time to really look for the hole because it was just a lot going on at the time. That that they just had to look, hey look, he can live with one lung. Let's just go ahead and take it out and deal with and deal with the rest. Right. So they just took it out, and so I was really just cut up. I was really just cut open, and 
all types of chest tubes and all types of stuff, feeding tubes, everything. When you wake up, is there anybody you know around? Mm -hmm. So when I woke up, my mom was there. When I woke up, my mom was there, my dad was there, my sister was there, and my nephew was there. You know, and my grandma was there too. My grandma was there as well. Yeah. So, Uh but but that whole time that I was in induced a coma, right? Some of my other family members came. My brother in law came too, but they really came because they thought I. I guess they thought that I was going to die. Yeah. So I guess they wanted just just to come kind of like see me like before I before I died to yeah work. yeah so like so like they came and like saw me and then like they ended up going back home but when I finally woke up my mom I think my mom was in the room maybe my mom and my dad was in the room okay yeah. and what'd you feel like waking up in a hospital room seeing your parents seeing your sister your nephew like what what thoughts as you just you know, open your eyes, come back to life. What, what thoughts are running through your head? Like, are you grateful? Are you, you got so many questions? Are you just like in a daze still? Well, when I woke up and I know this is, it might sound selfish, but it was the only person that I really wanted to see there. And that person wasn't there. So I guess during this whole time that my family came, she ended up coming too. But when she ended up came, coming your uh, your wife at the time yeah my wife at the time when she ended up coming it was just a whole conflict with like her my parents and my mom and my sister and i think her and my sister ended up getting into a fight at the at the hospital to the point where they end up having to uh to do it like on a time schedule so she could go on a certain time schedule and then they can go on a certain time schedule and so she but so i guess during all that thing she ended up going back home too and it's just like, I don't know. Like, me as a person, like, I don't understand how you could do something like that. Like, like I don't know. Like, I still kind of question it. Like, it's just, I don't really I don't really understand how you could do something. You know, like, your supposed husband is laying in the bed, and they telling you that, shit, he might die. And then, like, you just kind of, like, just go home. Like, like go back to Georgia. So, it's just like, she kind of, like, left back to Georgia again. Yeah. And then, when, when I woke up, my parents were there, which I'm forever grateful for to this day. Because they literally dropped everything that they was doing, everything, and literally came and, and was there for me. The whole time I was in the hospital, yeah. the therapy, everything, they was there for me. That's so sweet. Yeah, every That's day. amazing. Your your parents are seriously yeah. the best parents I've ever met, honestly. Like, they're the greatest. <laughs> they are the greatest. I love your mom and your dad. They are. They are, um, they are amazing. So then now you're up, they're there. Yeah. Um, what what do you tell them? Like what what do you tell your parents or what do they tell mm. you? Or your nephew's there too. Mm, well well remember Mello, Mello was only he was on like he was on like a, maybe a couple months. Mm-hmm. If that I think he was, he was about still to, a I, baby. You know what? Yeah, he was about to turn one. He was about to turn one because he ended up having his birthday down there. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So um what ended up happening? Okay, so uh, what was your question again? My question was. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just yeah, I lied. I'm thinking about a lot bit. Yeah, just you know, just talk go with the flow. But I was just wondering if your your parents kind of when they seen you wake up, did they come over, hug you, or say anything to you? Did you say anything to me to them? Like, yeah. hey mom, hey hey pops, like you know. Mm-hmm. Well, what are the, you guys doing here? Type thing. <laughs> well, no. Nah, at the time, at the time, I was just, I was really hooked up to a lot of machines. Yeah. So, and remember, I told you I had a trach in too. Yeah. Right. So I'm hooked up to all these machines. I got the trach in, but the trach makes it so I can't talk. Mm-hmm. So I can only really write down, you know, stuff. Oh, okay. So yeah. you can't even speak. Yeah, I couldn't even speak. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. what is what's the first thing you wrote? <laughs> uh, I think probably the first thing I wrote was. I'm hungry. No, no I'm just no, kidding. No, no, I, I I I think I asked like, where was my wife at? Oh, okay. Like, so I think that was the first thing I wrote, and I think my mom was like, not like she not here. Mm-hmm. And then from there, it was just like I really had to kind of like focus on everything that was kind of going on. Because I had a lot going Like, remember I told you, I'm hooked up to all these machines and everything. I got the trach in. Yeah. So, from there, it was like, I could only really think about that sometimes because I'm 
Like, like now I'm, I'm, I'm going through, I'm like, they're running tests all day. I'm waking up at like four o'clock in the morning and they're coming doing x-rays every single day. And it was like, it was like literally like the worst experience ever. But now, I, cause at the same time I got this tube in my throat that, that keeps popping out. Like I can barely breathe. Um, yeah. And it was like literally like just the worst. I, like I, I, I remember being in pain, but. I really just didn't care. You didn't care because... I really just didn't. I was just... What thoughts were in your head then? If you didn't care, it was more so of what? I was just... I guess I was just down and sad and, like, really depressed. Like, just everything that happened, everything that was going on. And at the time, I can't feel my legs, but it's still not registering to me that I'm paralyzed. Nobody ever comes to me, tells me anything, like, nothing. So it's just, like... Like, I guess, like, that first week, yeah. it's, like, like they're running tests on me, and then I see them doing something, like, down there, and, like, I look down there, and I can't feel it, and it's just, like, I'm just, like, I'm, I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Like, and then, like, to the point where it's just, like, am I paralyzed? Like, I think to myself, like, am I paralyzed? And then, like, I that's really, like, that's really how I kind of, like, found out, was I just seen them go down there, and I think they cath me, which is pretty much, like, for anybody that don't know when you cough it like that's kind of like how you pee so they like they did that and i didn't feel it and i was like i think i'm paralyzed that's crazy Mm -hmm. yeah that is crazy and how long after that were you in the hospital for oh so you were induced for three weeks so yeah so when i woke up it was like around october time frame yeah and i didn't leave the hospital until december until december and when i left When I left the sit, okay, so the situation that happened, okay, was, I guess this type of situation had never happened in the military before, to the point where they kind of didn't know what to do because when I came back, I was still pretty much considered being deployed. Oh, okay. So, so pretty much like my paperwork hasn't hadn't like processed in yet. So everything that happened, like like once that happens, it ha- like on paper, I guess they have to file it like I'm deployed still. So they're trying to figure out how to kind of go about that because I guess like by the book and like I guess by law, like they had to file it, like file like the paperwork and like do it a certain way to the point where when I left the military, I think I had to go into like like a little mental health facility. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Which never happened. No, I did go there, but I only went there for like a week. But when I went there, I just wasn't, I wasn't really like I was like I wasn't trying to hear it. Like I was just like just being an asshole, just not like doing. Like, yeah, I just wasn't trying to hear it. Yeah. So I wasn't really doing anything to the point where I think they just like I, I think they kind of kicked me out because I I won't do nothing. Yeah. Like I wasn't doing anything. They was like, yeah, we can't. I think they were just like, yeah, we can't keep him here. And like, like from there. I but why up. couldn't they keep you there? I think because I just wasn't doing anything. You weren't participating. Yeah, I wasn't participating. And because at the same time, okay, so, okay, so once I wake up and everything, that's when I had to start therapy. So I start, so then that's when they started getting me up. Like, I, like I never forget the hardest part about starting off. Yeah. Doing everything was just sitting up in the bed. Mm. Like, that was literally, like, the hardest part to to the point where once I finally sat up in the bed, yeah. like, it was like I was just, like, drenched in sweat because, like, it just took, I guess it just it just took everything out of me because now I'm living to live with one lung, too. So it was like, you know, when you live with one lung, it's like, I, I, it, it still feels the same, but, you know, when you exercise or you run or something like that, like, you get tired a lot, but you get winded a lot faster. So I guess the, like that's the only thing I would really say. So I'm learning to live with that. Um, and now I'm starting to go through therapy. So at first I really, like, again, through therapy and everything, I wasn't really trying to hear it. I wasn't really doing anything. But it got to a point where I just realized, look, I, I got to do this in order to get better. So I started getting up. So, like, they started, like, teaching me how to, you know, get up in a wheelchair and, like, do everything. And, like, I believe after me sitting up in the bed and everything, the first thing that I really learned how to do was do a transfer. And that's what, and that's one thing I try to tell everybody, too. Like, you know, I think transfers were one of the most important things that I could have learned because okay. I use it in, like, almost every aspect of my life is a transfer. Like, 
And like that's Learning how, how to me. transfer exactly. safely too. Exactly, 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 exactly. But at first, I was using a sliding board, yeah. but then I was just like, I don't like the sliding board thing. So mm-hmm. you know, once I got the strength up, I uh, I just started doing my own transfer. So I, I just try to recommend everybody like learn how to do a a solid transfer because that that'll get you far. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was your spinal cord injury level? Oh, okay. So it was, I was, I guess, okay. So when a bullet landed, it never hit my spine, but I guess the, the force of the bullet, once it stopped, it sent like a shock wave out to it, to the point where it collapsed my spine and one of my vertebrae. Mm-hmm. So that's what caused me to be paralyzed. I guess it was like something, I guess like, like, like my vertebrae was putting pressure on my spine or something like that. They yeah. don't really, they really don't tell you anything like they don't really give you any information it's not like they come and like they come and tell you like hey this you're like you're paralyzed this was wrong like like they did not do that to me and you know through the podcast that i have done uh for the most people i would say probably like 90 percent of the people they didn't tell them either like they didn't tell them that they was paralyzed they probably didn't tell them what was wrong like it's literally on you to find out and some stuff you really don't find out until you get your medical records and then you go through it. And you're like, damn, I didn't know this happened. Damn, I didn't know this and this and that. But they really don't tell you anything. Which, yeah. which to me, I feel like is a good thing and a bad thing because you're going through so much at that moment to where I don't know if you can really handle that type of information from them. Yeah. You know, it, like, you like, probably, probably too stressful. wouldn't even know what to think mm-hmm. or realize yeah. at that moment when you are yeah. paralyzed. So I think that they kind of leave it up to your parents or your family to kind of tell you. But, but what were your what were your thoughts? Like, oh, I'm paralyzed. Like, what did you think? What was what was really your initial thought? And to be honest, it was. I guess I was just worried about my ex so much that it was just. I, I you didn't really think just didn't about care. it much. No, no, I really just didn't care. No. Do you do you regret it? Yeah, I do. What do you regret? I do. I wish. Um, well, I took it seriously, but I wish I would have just took it serious, serious from the beginning. Like took you as, as far as like learning everything, like that like learning can. stuff. So you regret learning stuff about. No. Okay, so I regret not taking, like, my therapy and everything serious at first. Oh, okay. Because, like, at first, I would just, like, not want to do everything. Like, I would just, like, really, like, standoffish. So I wish I would have took that serious from the beginning to the point where I learned a lot of the stuff that I felt like I had to learn on my own. Because I felt like, yes, I did learn a lot. And, yes, once I started, like, you know, participating and doing stuff, like, I learned a lot through therapy. But it was a lot that I didn't, that I know for a fact that I learned that I just didn't. Like, I guess I had to find out on my own again. Yeah. Like, that I had to find out on my own because I, I wasn't paying attention whenever they taught me. So, I guess that's an advice or yeah. a tip you would give anybody out there that's maybe in the hospital mm-hmm. or a newly in a wheelchair. Yeah. That's what I try Take to Take it seriously. Exactly. And that's what I try to tell people. Try to really learn. Mm-hmm. Like, like you got to because this is your way of life now. Yeah. So everything that you're learning is your way of life. Like, like, look, these people are gonna go home and live their life. Like, 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 look, they're not worried about you after work. Most of them, ain't. most of them, ain't. and you know that's why I wish at the same time that you know physical therapy and occupational therapy. I wish that they had somebody there that was in a wheelchair. Like, because it's easy for you to tell me to do something, to do you know, like do this, do that, and you know you can walk. Like me, like, 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 like they don't know how I feel physically. They don't know how I feel mentally. So for them to tell me, it's like, it's like, it kind of like pisses you off in a way yeah. to the point where you don't want to do it because I they know you got it. Yeah, you got it. Exactly. Like, like, no, no, I don't got don't. it. I don't got it. <laughs> you do not understand. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, you know, but you know, like they, they get so many people coming through there and, you know, like they work with some people like, you know, like they just think, oh, you got it just like the last person got it. Yeah. You know? Do you regret any of your actions? Yeah. Going, I would say, just anything. What What do you regret? What actions do you regret? Mm, well, you see, I feel like I feel like the reason why I'm paralyzed is because I play too much. I feel like you know, like me, 
you know, yeah, like, yeah, I was going through something, but I knew for a fact I didn't want to kill myself. I know, I like, like I knew that. It just, I said it so much, I spoke that shit into existence, and it's just like, like I would like, like I don't. Know, I guess I just regret like opening my mouth just saying dumb stuff, like for real, for real, because I like I literally spoke that shit into existence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's it's really hard. It's really hard to really regret it and feel some type of way about it because I felt like me being paralyzed, unfortunately and fortunately, have brought me a lot of joy in my life. You know, I felt like a lot of the stuff, I felt like even my mindset wouldn't be where it's at if I wasn't paralyzed. Because I felt like, you know, back then I was just kind of so cocky and, you know, like just little stuff like that to the point where it's just like I really just didn't want to hear nothing from nobody. Yeah. But I felt like, I guess, me being paralyzed, like, it set me down to the point where, like, I had to learn, like, stuff. I had to learn, you know, like, like just, like, little things over again. Like, I had to learn how to be confident again. You know, like, yeah. I had to learn how to have self-esteem again. I had to, you know, it's like. Do you appreciate life more Oh, as well? definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And I enjoy making memories. Yeah. I enjoy making memories because, you know, once you go through a near, uh, uh, I, I guess, um, how would you say it? Like a near Your death? Life no, a near death. A near death experience. I mean, yeah. It just, it just, oh, it, it kind of opens up your eyes a lot more mm-hmm. to the point where, like, you're really just grateful to be here, right? Yeah, and I would say, you know, but it took me a long time to realize that too. Even after that, mm-hmm. I was just happy to be alive. Though, as the as the older we get, I feel like I can say this for the both of us: you just start to realize how mm-hmm. lucky you are to be alive today. Yeah, at this moment. At this moment, you know, life is precious. It can be taken away at any given moment, and yeah. you're just going to wish you had that back. Yeah. Or that person back. Yeah. Uh, so don't take life for granted. Live every day to the fullest. Mm-hmm. You never know what can happen, for real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so after you leave the hospital, um, do you stay in Colorado, or do you, like, are your parents still with you when you get out the hospital? What's yeah. that? What's that process like leaving the hospital okay. in a wheelchair? Because now you're new to a wheelchair. How is yeah. that? Okay, so that in itself, well, I guess me learning the therapy was was what I needed to the point where I knew kind of how to live life a little bit uh-huh. to the point where I was able to kind of like move around and stuff like that. But yeah. yeah, my parents were still there. And what ended up happening was, remember I told you this whole situation was different for like the military because they didn't really know what to do. Right. So now I'm paralyzed, but I'm technically still in the military. So so literally I ended up going home back to Georgia. So my parents packed all my stuff up that was in storage. Like they went and got all that stuff. Mm -hmm. They packed it up. Okay, so okay, so right when I start therapy, my ex ended up coming back. Like 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 she comes back. So she's there. So when I'm so that kind of gave me the motivation to kind of go through like you, you know, like start doing therapy and everything. So once I get out and I ended up at the mental health facility, I'm I'm literally there by myself. So I guess like the military trying to figure out like what to do mm-hmm. to the point where they're like, all right, look, we just have to send you home now because like like we really kind of don't know what to do besides like kind of like start out processing. You. Yeah. So they was like, you're gonna have to go on convalescent mm-hmm. leave. So I had to go on. So I was on. I was literally on convalescent leave for a whole year. So from there, uh, when I got out the mental health facility, and it was the same day that Sandy Hook happened. Oh damn, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So it was. It was that same day. I got out. My parents went to my. Uh, they went to like the thing and packed up all my stuff and put it in the U-Haul. And then I think we stayed in the hotel room that night. And then from there, we ended up driving back to Georgia. What well, they drove. Yeah. They drove. They drove. And then I went back to Georgia. And you stayed with your parents. Yeah. So, okay. So. Right. Mm-hmm. So I went back to my parents' house. And then uh, my ex, which was my wife at the time, she was there too. And I guess we was like, I don't, like I don't even think we was really arguing like that, but like we were going like arguing too at the same time. And then she ends up leaving again. She ends up leaving. So that was when she kind of like left me for good. And like I think I think I was probably back like only a week. Yeah. Yeah. So literally, like I'm going through that, 
and like she ends up leaving again, and then from there it was it was really just me and my parents, and that's how I kind of had to learn everything, which is really it was me and my parents, but my dad played a big part in that as well. Like my, yeah, yeah, like my dad played a big part in really like helping me out and like really kind of you know like taking me to my appointments and everything. Being there for you. Yeah, being there for me, yeah. Nice. Yeah. It was. It was. It was. Okay, so that is that now. Out of all of that, what was probably like the craziest thing for you to really realize? And it could be anything until now. Like, what were you really thinking? Because you weren't driving either, right? You were like, man, I'm not going to be able to drive. Man, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do that. Like, what were you thinking? Like, man, my life is over. This Mm -hmm. is, this is it. You know, I caused all of this. But really, like, what, what, what was crazy about all of that? Like, I, I don't know. I guess what has inspired you? I want to say this is my question. What and ins- what out of all of that? What really inspires you about yourself? Like, what's something that you are proud that you did? Mm. Like even with being in a wheelchair, or yeah, are you like even I just like my life period. I guess y- you being in a wheelchair. What what's something that you are proud of that you did for yourself? You know. What's that? Proud of that I did for myself. Yeah. You, you know what? To be honest, like, was being able to to try to guide people in the right direction because I know where I was at whenever I first got paralyzed, and I felt like I felt like I tried to help people out to the point where I just hope that they aren't in that situation that that I was at because I know I felt hopeless. I felt like I couldn't do anything. I felt like I couldn't have sex anymore. I felt like I couldn't drive anymore. I felt, obviously, I felt like I couldn't walk anymore. Um, yeah. just, you know, like you just feel like you can't do anything. You just kind of feel helpless. Mm-hmm. You kind of feel helpless. So then that that's where, you know, like, you know, the like insecurities go ahead and start creeping in. Um, just, you know, like you have no confidence. Like all, like it's, it's, yeah. it's a game changer for you. Sure. I agree. You know, that's like I said in the beginning of today's podcast, you know, I'm proud that you're you're on here and having people share their story, their life experience about being in a wheelchair because everybody kind of has their own experience that can help anybody out there. Even if it's just one person, it's helping mm-hmm. other people. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Is there anything that you feel like you you missed? Throughout your story That you want to say No Honestly no Because This was the first time I ever really got to Tell it in detail Because every Because every time I ever told my story It was from my mouth So It wasn't nobody really Asking me questions You know Or like You know like Just about like the little details You know so Honestly I felt like I got everything off my chest Finally for the very first time mm-hmm. And I don't know It feels good it, That's it, good. It really, it really feels good because I've never been able to really tell my story in its entirety before until right now. Okay. Yeah. Now I have a few questions from okay. Instagram. Okay. Instagram. That these yeah. were kind of uh, all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, where can we purchase hand controls that you have? Ooh, okay. In the charger. Ooh, okay. So the hand controls that I actually have in my car. Wait, hold on, hold up now. You can't just call it a charger. It's a Hellcat, all right? Well, Look, that's I was kind just of reading the question. A little disrespectful now. <laughs> Don't right. shoot the messenger, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right? All right, so look. The hand controls that I have in my car, those are called Guido Simplex Safe Lever Hand Controls. Mm-hmm. Those are permanent hand controls, yes. meaning those are fixed into the car. Those will run you about 4500 to 6000 installed. And right. we do have a video yeah. on our channel if you just look up hand controls. Yep. And I believe it was in a different car as well, the Chrysler. Yeah. You also had those installed the in the car, yep. but it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. You can go on there and yeah. it'll give you a link to the yep. hand control yep. website. So again, the hand controls are called the Guido Simplex Safe Lever Hand Controls. But I also have a pair of hand controls that I will be releasing myself. All right, so I'm still wait. So, so the hand control should be here within like 
a month to two months. Um, with everything that happened with COVID and everything that's going on with the whole shipping thing, that's kind of what's like the delay. But I'm dropping pretty much the best looking hand controls on the market. But these ones aren't permanent hand controls. These are portable hand controls, meaning you can take them off any car and put them on any car. So these ones aren't fixed to the car. And obviously there's a big price difference. So the price range is going to be around like, like somewhere in the two hundreds probably. So, but look again, they're better looking than anything that's out there on the market. Um, and they work, they work very well. They work very well. I'm, I'm really, I'm really proud of this because I know ain't nobody really got these out there. So okay. I, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Dropping soon. Right. Dropping soon. Hey, and the name, the name is called Six Sticks. So get you a pair of Six yes. Sticks releasing soon. So, All yeah. right. Next question. Ooh. Okay. Uh, how many times do you digital stimulate when you do when you're doing bell care? Oh damn! Okay, Ooh. <laughs> I ain't even just saying over. No, just I'm, answer I'm the question. Think. I'm trying to. Th I'm, honestly, I'm trying to think. You don't have to get into detail. No, well, no, I ain't gonna get into detail. But I'm trying to think because it's not like Catherine. Like I know how many times I like cat a day, but let me see. Maybe around like I don't. Maybe to the most, I would say like seven or eight times. I would say like seven eight. Okay. Seven eight. Next question. I'm paralyzed too, and I'm uncomfortable with how skinny my legs are. Okay. Any advice that you would give me? Wear pants. I mean, it's it's not the best look. Like, yeah, like your legs are gonna get smaller, and they ain't really nothing that you can really do. Look, just go ahead and live your life. If you really feel that uncomfortable, uncomfortable I would just wear pants. Honestly, yeah, honestly. But hey, look, sometimes I want to throw on shorts. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, like so, it's just like it's just mind over matter. Sometimes, yeah. you, sometimes you just gotta do it, it yeah. and not care what, and not really care what people think. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> What's up? Why did you guys really take a break from YouTube? Ooh. A while back. Okay, so, uh, this is almost a year, a year ago, right? It's been it's been like a year. Oh uh, yeah, it's so, been over a year. Yeah, so at the time me and you was going through some stuff and you know, we were possibly talking about separating and that's why we kinda like stopped uploading on YouTube. It wasn't really anything to film and even the, and if we would have filmed anything, it would have been fake on my part and fake on your part. Yeah. So it was just like we just kinda like just stopped filming because nothing that we would have filmed would have been like legit content. It, it, it would have all just been fake for the camera and we just stopped filming. Okay, next question. How's your fertility journey going? Ooh. Honestly, I feel like that's something for another video. Okay. That's something for another video. Like, I like I do want to share. But you know what? How is it going? Tough, frustrating. Yep. You know, tough and it's frustrating. Tough and frustrating, but we, we will be dropping a video on that very soon. How are you doing? How am I doing? I didn't even know that question was on there. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm good. I'm really good. I'm really good. And I would say one of I would say one of the biggest things that inspire me every day, even though this person isn't paralyzed, is you. Oh. Mm hmm. Thank you. Like you, you inspire me every single day. Just kind of see what you do. Uh, see how you kind of go about things. Is it's it's really something to look up to, like you know. It's like like sometimes I wish I could be more like you, you know. I, like, Stop. like honestly, no, for real, for real. Stop with the cap. Oh my mm -hmm. god! All right, so I really do wish sometimes I could be more like you. Not in the I female aspect though, but you know what I mean. I appreciate that. Okay, yeah. well, all the other questions are kind of about me, and okay. I don't want to be like <laughs> egotistic type. Ooh, and okay, be like, okay. Eh. give me a question. Give me a question. Give me a question. Give me one. What do you love one. about Cassie? What's up with you and Cassie? Where's mm, Cassie? Okay. Hey, oh, how come you, know you don't what? film with Cassie? All these questions. What's up with you and Cassie? Mm, yeah. Like, yeah. So okay. So the, the, so the why don't like, you film with Cassie? I'm filming with Cassie. Yeah. And I did see the question was on. The, are you with Cassie? Obviously, <laughs> we're with each other. So and, and and then like I don't understand how people look. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you guys go follow me on Instagram. I post up a lot of dope stuff on there. Yeah. But I mean, I don't understand how. If you follow me on Instagram, how you not see me post up with Cassie? Like, yeah. anytime I'm somewhere, I'm with you. 
Yeah. Like anytime I'm filming something, I'm filming you. I'm filming me. Yeah. We at the movie. Like I don't understand. Like who? Like who do they think is filming me? <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? Like I don't understand that. Yeah. So yes, we are together. Yes. Uh, well, why we stopped filming? Well, well, really, because Cassandra's kind of started working on something. So do you want to kind of tell them what you started working on? No, I'm gonna just keep it a secret. Ooh, okay. So you wanted <laughs> them. You know what? I need to start being more like that. Yeah. She don't be telling people her next move. I like that. I nope. like that. All right, but um, she started working on something. And then, you know, YouTube is kind of like my dream, kind of. Yeah. So, and then I, I had this idea one day, and, like, I spoke to her about it. And she said, you know what? That'd be dope. And it was to do a podcast. And it was to, you know, uh, interview yeah. somebody. It was to interview somebody about how they got paralyzed. Yeah. And then once I did that, it was like, we, like I guess I kind of saw the vision. And then she saw the vision as well. I don't think she really ever saw the vision on well, YouTube too much. No, honestly, I really did see the vision but mm -hmm. i i didn't want it to come from me i wanted it to come from you okay um the thing for me was sometimes we put our we as a couple we put our life out there and show you guys mm -hmm. you know all the cute little things we do yeah. all the butterflies that we got flying around here yeah. but it's not always picture perfect yeah our life is not perfect we go mm -hmm. through stuff too to where you know what turn the cameras off we need our yeah. space um, and I think that it's a great idea that you decided to come back on here and actually bring other people on the channel mm -hmm. and have them share their life because you, sometimes we're not the only, you're not the only one in a wheelchair. You, you want yeah. other people on here sharing their life in a wheelchair, how they do go about things, what they're doing in life, what yeah. careers they got going on, what, what you know, you're still exactly. capable of, mm -hmm. um, you know, cause everybody's different and i think the this podcast is the reason why we named it more life because there's more life you know we're, we're not we don't want to be the only faces you guys are the faces you the viewers out there who are also in a wheelchair you guys are gonna give more people more life more you know hopes and dreams of what they're gonna yeah. be capable of so i think i'm excited to you know have more people come on here Ooh, okay. um so if you're watching this you're in a wheelchair and you're doing whatever you're doing in life and you want to come on here and share your life story with us make sure you hit kevin up in his dms oh or you get you know what i'll make sure to post up an email mm -hmm. i'll make sure to post up an email so you guys can kind of go to the link and if you guys want to go ahead and write us on the email, yeah. just contact us through our email saying that you want to share your story or you can hit either one of us up on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, so make sure you guys go do that. So, yeah, if you if you guys want to come on and share your story. Yeah, you got, you let's love, inspire love everyone. Exactly. Let's inspire one another. You exactly. guys inspire us. Exactly. Um, what's I, I have one question for you. Yeah. What Out of all your interviews, what's one thing that has inspired you or really, you know, you were taken aback by their story? Ooh, um, which which interview oh. left a mark on you? <laughs> which interview? You know what? The interview that left a mark on me was was the one I, th I believe her name was Yasmin. I believe. Okay. Yeah, the one who she was thirteen years old and uh, when she got paralyzed, I feel like that w that one was a that one was a tough one because after that interview, mm -hmm. I went and spoke to you, and then we both ended up crying. I know we were both crying over yeah, her story. Yeah, that that interview had me mess up a little bit, but it was it was j j just just to kind of see the life that she kind of carved out for herself after becoming paralyzed was was very inspirational. Because you got to think about it, she got paralyzed at thirteen. At thirteen, what are you doing? You know, you, you're a you, child. Yeah, you in grade school? Um, it's you know exactly you're a child. Yeah, and like to just know that it was. I, Did she lose uh, her mother as well? As well, yep. She yep. lost her mother at a she young looked, age uh, as well. So, and then at the same time, she lost her mom. She was giving birth. So, like, yes. And then she wasn't able to go to her mom's funeral. So, that that interview was very tough to do. And very if you want to check do. it out, make sure yeah. you go to our channel yeah. and click on her interview. Mm -hmm. Her name was Yasmin. Yeah. Uh huh. And. You know, like you said, that's why we kind of named the podcast like the More Life Podcast. I don't yeah. think we're gonna change. I don't think we're gonna change the channel name, but for the podcast, it'd be the More Life Podcast because you know, even after a spinal cord, there's still more life to live. You right. still got look. It doesn't. And as much as you feel like life is over mm -hmm. or like you can't do stuff, it is. It is not like it, it is. It is. Tr like trust yeah. me, it's nothing. It's nothing like that. Or it's even. 
even in just life being an adult too yeah. you know sometimes you quit a job yeah. there's still more life or you quit a relationship yeah. there's still more more life mm -hmm. anything that may be going on in life yeah. you know yeah i feel like anybody could relate to it mm -hmm. even if you're not in a wheelchair you're not paralyzed yeah. i feel like hearing stories like this could also inspire you even though you guys out there in wheelchairs don't owe us anything mm -hmm. it's inspirational yeah and that is it for today. I, I don't know. But do, do you feel like we're missing anything? You want to add anything mm. to the end of this video? Well, I just want to let y'all know Slick Six coming soon. Like I said, I'm dropping my own form of portable hand controls. Also, I'll be dropping my own cushions. So, look, you guys, when I'm in a car, I got a cushion. When I'm on a plane, I got a cushion. When I, you know, transfer yeah. onto like the pool edge, look, I'm, I'm sitting on top of a cushion. I got some nice cushions coming soon. Uh, memory some foam. Cool thing. Exactly. I use I use them. Cassandra uses them. Oh, yes. My mom uses them. Yes. So they have a layer of memory foam, and they also have a cooling gel as well, so you keep your little booty cool too at the same time. So. I like it. Yeah. So your boy coming out with some hand controls, aka the slick sticks. All right, we coming out with those, and then again we again we coming out with our own cushions. So we got that. We working on some things right now. We are also working on the podcast. Um and yeah, we just you know living life. Um, we're, we're not. I don't plan on stop doing. St I don't plan on stop doing vlogs, but I plan on to pretty much make the channel more around like my lifestyle, like you know, like lifestyle stuff. You know, like stuff that we kind of do. Yeah, because we we realize that a lot of people out there when they do find this mm -hmm. channel, they find it through the wheelchair videos. lifestyle. Yep, and the driving videos as well. Yeah. So that's a big one too. So, so we're going to be doing more content yep, on so, that. Yeah, might go play some golf, you know, because you know you got like the little, it's like a it's like a little wheelchair golf thing. Oh, so Yeah, to where like, it's, 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 it's like a wheelchair. Have you ever been golfing though before no, your never. accident? I've never been golfing. Oh. I've never been <laughs> well, golfing. Well, you know what? It's new to you, new to me. Yeah, I know. And I've they offer lessons. Golfing. Oh, okay. Oh, you never been golfing either? No, I've never been well, golfing. Well, you know, I never expected you to go golfing. But, mm -mm. I mean, you know what? Unless somebody go check golf. me. Ooh, oh, yeah. oh, you want to go? I'll take you. Mm -hmm. You want to go? Okay, yes. You want to go? Okay, all right, man. Vlog coming soon. Vlog. Hey, look, we about to be golfing, so yep. I got to figure mm -hmm. out where they got it at, because they don't have them at every golf course, Okay. but I know for a fact that they got them at they golf courses here. Yeah, I was no, going to say somewhere in California. Mm, of course, of course. Yeah, they got them in LA, I believe. And so, indoor skydiving? Oh yes. So well, one of my friends who is also a YouTuber, he and he's also in the wheelchair too, which I did a, a podcast with him too. He's the one that uh he, he got paralyzed for the motorcycle accident. Um he asked me if I wanted to go skydiving. I was like, Yeah, let's do it. So we're gonna go indoor skydiving too. So look, you guys, we're just gonna show you it's it's more life out there. It's more life to live. Even after a spinal cord injury, because I know somebody who's looking at me right now that's like, you know, like that they're not in a wheelchair where they look at somebody in a wheelchair like, damn, man, that guy can't do nothing. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. Look, you could pretty much do everything that you could do before, just a little bit differently. Are right, you look, trust me, trust me, go out there, live your life, have fun. It's not over. All right. Trust me. All right. Look, go follow me on Instagram. You'll see it ain't over. All right. Because we doing some things on there. All right. Yep. So, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Yep. And you, if guys. you enjoyed this podcast, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe mm -hmm. to the channel yeah. and leave us any feedback down in the comments below. Thank yeah. you. And so, hope you have an amazing day. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Good interview, man. You did a good job. Good job. Thank you. Good, good job. Ooh, she did a good one, y'all. She did a good one.